Hello, welcome to Talking Europe. I'm Catherine Nicholson today speaking to Edvard Heger, Prime Minister of Slovakia, one of the EU countries which borders Ukraine. And we're speaking at the conclusion of an EU summit which was dominated uh, by talk about the Russian war on Ukraine. It was preceded as well by an emergency meeting of NATO and also a meeting of G7 leaders. Edward Hager, thank you for being with us. Thank you for the invitation. Good evening. I'd like to start first by uh, talking about something that was greatly discussed at all three of the summits, the potential for a chemical attack by Russia, something that's obviously causing great worry. Um, how would you expect the EU to react mm -hmm. if a chemical attack was proven? Well, first of all, I would like to emphasize that uh, Europe and the democratic world must uh, not use a defensive language, but must be very sovereign in, in its action because we are the... I would say strongest part of the world and uh, we are sovereign uh, we, we are very peaceful that's also need to say that we are a community of peace and we don't want any war and uh, Vladimir Putin must see that uh, we are serious on uh, the action that he's providing and he crossed all the red lines because uh, first of all he attacked uh, a democratic and free country and not even that he also uh, started to kill innocent people He's bombing schools, he's bombing hospitals. So he crossed all the red lines and we, we have to show him, and that's what we're doing, that uh, what's enough, it's enough, it's too much. And he must, he must fail. I think he's trying, we, we heard uh, a couple of weeks ago that he was uh, uh, frightening with, uh, with the nuclear uh, weapons. Now he's doing it with the chemical weapons. Well, we, we should not be fearful. We should uh, really be bold and, and uh, we, I think that's, that's the importance, that we need to provide economic sanctions and show, because we're writing the history at this moment, and we need to show not just to him, but to anybody who would want to follow his example, that it's a bad idea. It's a bad idea, and they should never try it uh, again, and we should crush him economically, uh, because we want also the, the Russian country, I would say, uh, to be from, uh, from his regime. Something else that came out of these two days of summits, uh, NATO leaders giving the green light to new battle groups on the eastern flank, including in Slovakia. What does this involve and how permanent will this battle group be? Well, it's, uh, it's a question how permanent it will be. But uh, at this moment, we see that uh, it's got a great meaning. It's important that it's there and we need to enforce the whole eastern flank. I mean, we are a country that didn't have this uh, uh, enhanced forward presence as one of the last. So I'm very, very great, uh, very thankful that uh, it's happening and we already received the equipment and the soldiers are to come within a couple of weeks. And uh, yeah, that's one of the signs to show that it's not only deterrence, as we know that NATO is deterrence and defense. It's not only about deterrence, but it's also the defense that we are defending and we are capable to defend any possible attack. So that shows a strong signal to Vladimir Putin that he should not uh, mess with uh, the democratic part of the world. You talk about it as deterrence and defence. Vladimir Putin, on the other hand, has talked about strengthening NATO's eastern flank as a provocation towards Russia. Given that language, could this deployment put Slovakia in perhaps more danger? Well, that's exactly. I mean, let's look at his words. I mean, he's a manipulator. He's manipulating the, the public opinion. What does it mean? I mean, how could we provocate him? We are a defensive we want to protect our freedom. We, like I said in the beginning, we are a community of peace. If you are a community of peace, you cannot threat to anybody because you want peace. So we are just defending and that's why uh, you can see on this example that he's just manipulating uh, because we want them also to live in the peace. Nobody told him to attack Ukraine. Ukraine was not attacking Russia. They were peaceful living in their own country. So, so that's, that's the answer. He's just manipulating and we should, we should not uh, get frightened by his manipulation. Um, a sort of a, a special guest, I think we can say, at this summit was the Ukrainian president, Volodymyr Zelensky, who, of course, joined the summit virtually. Um, it was a very emotional speech, we're told, that he as well called out each member state of the EU and assessed how he sees their level of support for Ukraine. Um, some of them, he said, well, almost, or you're, you're getting close. What was the reaction in the room? Well, I think uh, the whole discussions of the EU summits uh, are very honest, and that's very good. And uh, through the honesty, we also have a great unity. 
So, so it's good when we hear the, I mean, uh, the words of, of Vladimir Zelensky, and uh, it just reflects the situation and the circumstances. And you know, everything is a process. And and the good thing is that we are in united in uh, condemning the aggression of Russia in uh, Ukraine. We are very much united in uh, providing robust sanctions to stop the war and uh, and killing people in Ukraine because we want peace. So, so this is where we are. And, and uh, his words were just, uh, like I said, reflecting what he feels, but uh, he appreciates, and on the other hand, he very much in the beginning said that he appreciates mm -hmm. the, um, uh, the solidarity and, and also uh, the, the hand that EU is providing to him, and he feels that. And it's a growing process and it's a growing relationship. I'm very thankful and glad that it is a growing relationship because we as a Slovakia, invested into this relationship very much. They're our close neighbor, they're our good friends. We have long, long-term uh, relationships with them and we wish them peace and we wish them prosperity. Uh, just in terms of another one of your neighbors, Hungary, uh, Vladimir Zelensky had a particular message for the Prime Minister, Viktor Orban, telling him to, quote, pick a side. Uh, do you agree with Vladimir Zelensky about this, that Hungary needs to pick a side, needs to show more overt support for Ukraine? Well, you see, I just spoke about the unity and I think, and I understand your question and, and, and it's, a, it's a legitimate question and, uh, from, from a certain perspective. But on the other hand, we have to realize, and, and uh, Joe Biden said that very clearly, that our strength is in the unity unity of European Union, but not only that, the unity of democratic world. And we should be very careful on not destroying this unity. And sometimes the questions are just not there to, for me to comment, because I think it's everybody's own approach, own decision uh, that uh, needs, needs to think about the, the, the circumstances. And it's good that we are lead, uh, I would say, leaders by example, you know, that we uh, can inspire each other. And, and uh, that helps the unity to grow because the strength is in the unity. Let's speak about something where there has been unity from the EU up to now, uh, sanctions. Uh, there have been several rounds of sanctions imposed on Russia, as we know. Um, in terms of tightening those sanctions, reinforcing them, yes. there are several member states that say they're opposed to doing that at this point. Um, can we expect EU sanctions to be tightened anytime soon? Is that something that you want to see? Yes, absolutely. I think it's important because the sanctions are here to stop the aggression and break the legs of, I would say, Vladimir Putin and his regime. So therefore, uh, even these conclusions, they say that we need to continue in a robust uh, sanctions depending and not as we will able to uh, provide them, but uh, also closing the loopholes, as, as you mentioned, because uh, being very precise and, and, uh, and it's not always as easy because you need to investigate, you need to discover the property of these rich oligarchs uh, who are uh, enjoying the property or the money of the, of the Russian people here uh, in Western and Eastern and in Europe. Uh, in European Union. So by we doing it, it's the progress that uh, we see and the progress must be growing. And I believe that if the progress will be growing and it will be growing, it will have a strong effect on Vladimir Putin. Um, in terms of refugees, uh, a large proportion of those who fled Ukraine have uh, headed into Slovakia. More than a quarter of a million have crossed the border with tens of thousands staying in Slovakia. I'm just wondering how Slovakia is coping with that. Um, and in terms of EU solidarity, Ursula von der Leyen talking about making 17 billion euros available mm. to member states for uh, supporting refugees. But is, is that coming fast enough? Yes, I think uh, what we see is, uh, like I said, is the unity and the second important uh, value that we see is the solidarity, as you mentioned. And uh, I very much appreciate the approach of Slovak citizens uh, in order uh, how they welcoming the Ukrainian families, as, or especially, I would say, women with children, because they're coming really in a very tough position. Some of the kids don't even have shoes and they had to travel in cold weather uh, to come to Slovakia. So we're trying to make a warm welcome to them as much as we can. and we. Uh, 
uh, introduced several uh, acts that uh, where they can uh, achieve or they can have access to the health care, social care. They can have access to the schools, kindergartens mm -hmm. for the children. Women, if they wish to work, they can access the labor market and also we're providing them housing. Many families offering their own housing. They actually take them to their homes, which is, I think, very important and, and, and good. So, so I must say that uh, Slovak citizens really prove that they have big heart and they showed the solidarity to their neighbors and friends uh, from Ukraine. And you're confident that Slovakia can support this level of refugees over the long term? And not even that. I think uh, what we see is the unity among the European countries. And I got many calls in the first days and I still receive this, uh, this information from the leaders that if we won't be able to cope with it, they will gladly help us. And this is really also a move forward from the migration crisis that we saw uh, in, the, in the past. And it's a very good sign. It's a good sign for the future of Europe. We've just got a brief bit of time left to speak about Ukraine's bid for EU membership. No concrete improvements uh, in terms of Ukraine's point of view on that at this summit. Are you disappointed in your EU colleagues? I wouldn't really agree because we as a Slovakia, we proposed two weeks ago uh, in Versailles a concrete, uh, I would say, a worked out uh, process that could help because we have experienced it. We, over the last year, we invested a lot in uh, de developing eight programs for helping Ukraine to develop as a country to be closer to the accession to the European Union. What we say, we need to provide them funds and we need to provide them assistance with the reforms because the reforms will help them to meet the criteria. We don't want to lower the criteria. We want to help them to faster meet the criteria. And that's why we uh, spoke about the reform team. So, and we have this uh, in the reforms and the fund is in the conclusion. So I think we, again, going the right way, the progress is there and we just have, have to keep, uh, keep continuing this. All right, Edward Heger, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for the invitation. And thanks to you for watching. See you soon on France 24.